in the words of the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, which is Sunni Islam's highest seat of learning, without Abyssinia in modern-day Ethiopia and its king who protected the first Muslims, Islam would have been destroyed in its cradle. For a little background, Islam emerged in around 16 at a time when Arabs practiced polytheism and Muhammad's call to abandon ancestral traditions in the city of Mecca was perceived as a cultural insult by its residents. So the early followers of Islam started facing increasing persecution. By 615, the situation worsened and at this time, it became clear that they had to escape from the grip of the Quraysh, who were the ruling Arab tribal confederation in Mecca, and find safety elsewhere. Muhammad advised them to seek refuge in northern Abyssinia, as Ethiopia was known back then, where they would find a just king and a land that valued human rights. This marked the first hijra in Islamic history. Faced with the very real possibility of extinction, the initial migration group, which consisted of 12 men and 4 women, fled Arabia in either 613 or 615, according to other sources. Among them were Muhammad's daughter, Rukaya, and his son-in-law, Uthman ibn Affan. They boarded a merchant ship crossing the Red Sea into East Africa. In Aksum, they were welcomed by the Christian ruler, known in Arabic tradition as Najashi, or King Ama in Jez. Aksum had embraced Christianity 300 years earlier and spanned modern-day Ethiopia and Eritrea, with borders extending into southern Arabia. This kingdom granted Muslims the freedom to practice their religion peacefully. The Meccan chieftains were furious upon discovering the Muslim escape to Abyssinia, fearing the establishment of a Muslim stronghold if Abyssinians converted. In response, the Quraysh sent a delegation to King Najashi, demanding the surrender of the fugitives. They arrived with expensive gifts for the king in an attempt to gain support. They claimed that the Muslim migrants were rebels who had introduced an unfamiliar religion unknown to both the Meccans and the Aksumites. They also asserted that their relatives sought for their return. The king was concerned that he could be harboring troublemakers in his kingdom, but still, guided by justice, refused to hand over the migrants until he had their defense. And there, we had a moment suggestive of the judgments of the biblical King Solomon. He therefore summoned the Muslim refugees in his court to respond to the allegations. Jafar, who was Muhammad's cousin and the leader of the exiles, presented their defense. He argued that they were not criminals, but victims of religious persecution. The king, who was a devout Christian, inquired if the prophet had brought a scripture same to the messengers of old. Jafar agreed and mentioned the Quran as their sacred text. The king then requested a recitation, and the prophet's cousin proceeded to recite a passage from the Quran, specifically about Jesus and Maryam in Islam. Upon hearing it, Najashi exclaimed that indeed, what was presented and what Jesus brought had originated from the same source of light. The king then told the Muslims that they could stay, assuring them of safety in his country, and he returned the gifts to the envoys and dismissed them. Despite declaring that he would never give up the Muslims, the king did not convert. Nonetheless, at that moment, Islam found its first sanctuary, which was in an African Christian land, protected by a Christian king, who considered Muslims as his brothers and sisters. A year later, upon hearing rumors that the Quraysh had converted to Islam, the exiles decided to return to Mecca. They, however, found out it was a lie, and they returned once again to the Aksumite kingdom in 615 or 616 as per other sources. This time, they were accompanied by additional converts, making the migrant group consist of a total of 83 men and 18 women. Some of the exiles returned to Mecca and joined Muhammad in the migration to Medina, while others opted to stay in Aksum and eventually reached Medina in 628. Following their departure from Abyssinia to Medina, King Najashi passed away in 630, and upon learning of his death, Prophet Muhammad conducted a prayer in his absence. This significant chapter in history highlights Africa's important roles in global affairs during ancient times. 
thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon in our next video